Remember when they used to say this? It means that instead of the vaccine being able, excuse me, it means for instead of the virus being able to hop from person to person to person to person, spreading and spreading, sickening some of them, but not all of them. And the ones that it doesn't sicken don't know they have it. And then they give it to even more people because they didn't recognize they were, right? Instead of the virus being able to hop from person to person to person, potentially mutating and becoming more virulent and drug resistant along the way. Now, again, see, that was all, this is all, everything she's saying here is a lie. Come right from Big Pharma and put in her mouth and they because they give her one hundred thousand dollars a day to do it. Here we go. We know that the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops with every vaccinated person. That's it. A vaccinated person gets exposed to the virus. Boom. The Ooh. virus does not infect them. The nope. virus cannot then use that person to go anywhere. The else. virus cannot infect them. Hey. Even the head of the Pfizer said that. He said, excited to share the updated analysis from our phase three study with BioNTech also showed that our COVID-19 vaccine is 100% effective in preventing COVID-19 cases in South Africa. 100%? He said that. He said that. Hey, I would like to let you know that I have tested positive for COVID-19. <laughs> I am thankful to have received four doses. Four doses. And he still got it. Again, I'll 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 wreck my style. So my joke that I like. You imagine if we all got the polio vaccine in the same year, and then we all got polio, and then they tried to sell you a drug to treat polio after you got vaccinated for it, and still got it. And then it gives you polio. <laughs> 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 and then you get a rebound case of polio, because that's what he's selling. He's selling Pixlovid here. He goes, I am feeling well while experiencing very mild symptoms. Now, that's important. Keep that. Don't lose that. Try to that. He's saying he's having very mild symptoms. I am isolating and have started a course of Paxlovid. Now, Paxlovid is being used right now, even though it's not authorized for, for COVID. It's being used over off-label. You can, you're allowed to kind say Kind of that? an emergency use kind of a thing. But I'm like, well, what kind of an emergency... He says, we have come so far in our efforts to battle this disease that I am confident I will have a speedy recovery. I am incredibly grateful for the tireless efforts of my Pfizer colleagues who work to make vaccines and treatments available for me and people around the world. Hold on. Paxlovid is not approved, but is authorized for emergency use by the FDA to treat mild to moderate COVID. Now, if it's mild, how the fuck is that an emergency? And it's specifically, it doesn't treat, it's, to him, he's not saying it treats severe COVID. He's saying it only treats mild to moderate. So how the fuck is a mild case of COVID an emergency? I ask you, Max. Well, they say you need to take it early on, that you have to take it early before the symptoms worsen. Uh, and then, you know, I guess if they don't worsen, you'll think it it worked. I've seen uh, statistics, some data citing around 50% efficacy. That was Pfizer's own data. And I remember Fauci gave a talk when he was demonizing other off-patent early treatments. And actually, doctors were being fired, like Paul Merrick, fired for giving their patients early treatments. And Fauci said in this talk, this was like over a year or around a year ago, he said, there will be a pill. I want to see a pill that will treat COVID. But he, of course, wanted the pill to be produced by Big Pharma and licensed right. by the groups that are close to the NIH. And so this, this was the pill. And we've seen Joe Biden take it and rebound. We've seen none other than Anthony Fauci take it and rebound. And that's why I think this pill should be renamed Charles Barkley vid <laughs> or Dennis Rodman vid. That's right. I mean, this pill is the round mound, mound of rebound. rebound. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 uh, you know, this, this is what we used to call Pfizer Mectin. Go to the gray zone right now to our YouTube channel. And I have an interview up with Nicaragua's version of Anthony Fauci, someone who's much more humane, who actually comes from a people's movement, the Sandinista Front, and is the chief public health advisor to Daniel Ortega. 
And we talk about a number of issues related to COVID in that interview I conducted in February, one being why Nicaragua did not lock down and did not close its schools. And she states that we needed to save the lives of our informal and poor workers who would have died if we forced them to lock down because they would have starved. And it was none other than UNICEF, Mm -hmm. the UN agency that said that closing schools harms children. But I also asked her about the issue of off patent early treatments, including ivermectin. I don't know if I'm, am I allowed to say that on the show? You're allowed to say um, ivermectin. We're just not allowed to say that it treats COVID. I'm allowed to okay, say that well, they were afraid that it could, which is what they were well, afraid. I asked her, are you administering this in public hospitals? And she said, absolutely, we are. And we're using it as a prophylactic, uh, as a preventative. In addition, I went to pharmacies all around Nicaragua and had conversations with at least 30 pharmacists about them. They're prescribing off patent early treatments without a prescription for about five cents a pop. And they told me that they were very popular and everyone was taking it. So what we have here is a bunch of billionaire barons who are encouraging an anti-scientific culture because it profits them. And now we are seeing them be the mask lifting. We're seeing them be exposed in broad daylight. Unfortunately, there will be no accountability because Borla, he's taken the money and run. He is so wealthy that uh, Pfizer is beginning to buy other major companies and moving into other fields. Um, Pfizer is buying the largest uh, global blood therapeutics company for $5.4 billion. And that is thanks to all of the propaganda surrounding this vaccine, specifically that it would stop COVID in its tracks, as Rachel Maddow said, uh, in between claiming that Russia was going to alter our weather in the winter time yes. to freeze us all to death. <laughs> Max, imagine if there was a video of you or me saying something that demonstrably false about COVID or lockdowns or the vaccines. They would never stop pillorying us for that. No one ever brings that up. No one, you know why? It's just like with Russiagate, because they were all wrong about it. And if they're, just like 9-11, if everybody's wrong, then nobody's wrong. It was okay, because everybody, who could have seen this coming? I could have. Uh, so yeah, so they and they'll never admit that they were wrong. And, uh, again, the dumb pothead comedian somehow got this right a hundred percent. And it's, uh, because I wasn't operating out of fear. I'll be honest. I've got this as wrong as anybody. I was just as wrong as my friend Graham Elwood was at the beginning of COVID until I got vaccine injured. And then I started to look into everything. I started to look into the COVID narrative. And I started to look into vaccines and I found out that they were lying about everything. They lied about the origin of the virus. They lied about funding the virus. They lied about the kind of research they were doing on the virus. They lied about the the scientists who said it might have came from that lab. They lied about masks. They lied about herd immunity. They lied about natural immunity. There isn't a thing. They lied about ivermectin. There isn't a thing they didn't lie about. And there are still people... To this day, those same people still uncritical of this COVID narrative. Still, they're still doing shit like saying, we need more masks. We need more lives. It's just nuts. And uh, again, it's just like I I thought the Mueller report would make everybody go, we we were wrong. And uh, Jimmy Dore and the Gray Zone were right. Uh, Of course, that didn't happen because that would take integrity. And there's very little of that going around in news journalism. So again, same thing with this. They'll never admit they were 100% wrong, and I was 100% right. I did a video about this with Dr. Robert Malone uh, over a year ago. That video did not get taken down by YouTube for misinformation, and every fucking thing he said came true, and everything that they said, like guys like when Graham came on my show, was wrong, 100% wrong. They didn't know what the science was as they were telling people to follow the science and they weren't following the science. Justin Trudeau didn't follow the science. None of these people are. And by the way, you don't follow science. You question science. That's how science works. Okay. I'm done with my speech. Anything you'd like to add to this? Well, I think we have to consider why we're seeing a, so these kind of admissions and concessions 
from the elite that brought us all of these pandemic restrictions in such lockstep. I mean, first of all, we have to remember that the COVID restrictions were game planned along with censorship, mass censorship and all the propaganda uh, during the event 201 simulation sponsored by Bill Gates, which involved U.S. intelligence. Avril Haines, who's now the director of national intelligence, was there along with big pharma figures and everything that they said was going to take place in terms of the restrictions that would be applied took place uh, literally months later when a pandemic was declared. And throughout that process, massive amounts of wealth was extracted from the general public yes. and placed in the hands of a very small elite. According to Oxfam, the wealth of 10 of the top billionaires in the world has increased by close to 50 percent, while 97 percent of the world's population has grown poorer. So we're at the end of what's a, a kind of a war right now. Why didn't we see that same kind of concession or these admission, admissions that, you know, you're, you might be about to play from Bill Gates about the Mueller report? You know, why did they have to have the Senate Intelligence, uh, Republican Intelligence Committee report claiming that, you know, there was collusion? Why did they keep it going? Because they hadn't gotten their war yet. They needed a big war with Russia in order to extract more money from the general population to make the global 1% wealthier. That's what we're seeing with Lockheed Martin and Raytheon right now with the $40 billion in aid. Biden just authorized another, I think, $5 billion. So they're in the middle of another war. And so we're still getting the anti-Russian propaganda. But what what's sort of chilling is that if to the extent that the COVID propaganda has ended, it means that a new thing is being prepared and, you know, not to be conspiratorial or to, you know, to be uh, conspiratorial uh, because it's maybe necessary to consider that powerful people do conspire. Uh, I'm not saying that the, the uh, that COVID was deliberately manufactured in order to do all this, but uh, Bill Gates, Gavi, uh, his global v vaccine alliance contains a section called Next Pandemic. And under this section, it declares that the COVID-19 pandemic wasn't the first to devastate the world and it won't be the last. In a new series, we round up emerging infectious threats that have the potential to erupt into global pandemics. And there are 17 potential viruses that could erupt, hantavirus, Rift Valley fever, uh, you know, yellow fever. Bill Gates has predicted some kind of pox. Right now we have the, the monkey pox scare. There's so, so now we're living in a state of permanent emergency and the emergency measures around COVID have not been lifted. And we're also seeing an attempt which is being imposed by these transnational billionaire elites to do in what, in their words, is to transform food systems. And that's why we're seeing protests erupt in the Netherlands against the controlled destruction of the agricultural sector there in the middle of a global uh, cost of living crisis. So I think we're heading into interesting and potentially terrible times uh, in which we'll see shortages while the billionaires who have everything continue to push these policies that create more shortages and more pain for the general population. Well, I just wanted to play this. Here's Bill Gates again admitting that this was all bunk. It wasn't until early February when I was in a meeting that experts at the foundation said, there's no way, you know, this there's been too much uh, travel without diagnosis uh, for us to contain this. So he's trying to say, I'm going to guess that's February 2021. He's trying to say that, oh, we just the, the reason why we couldn't contain it was because all the people traveling. That's not the reason. The reason was the vaccine is not sterilizing. It's a leaky vaccine and it doesn't present, prevent you from getting the uh, virus and it doesn't prevent you from contracting it or spreading it. So that's why. But it slows it. But it slows it. <laughs> but, it's slow, but I'm supposed to slow it, even though everyone's going to get so, COVID. Everyone's <laughs> going to get COVID, but slower. And then at that point, we didn't really understand the fatality rate. You know, we didn't understand that it's a fairly low fatality rate. And low fatality rate for COVID-19 and and the people who it affects, who are they? And that it's a disease mainly of the elderly, kind of like flu is, although a bit different than. And the, the elderly, kind of like the flu, a bit different. And 97 percent of the people who died from it had four comorbidities. Do you have four yep. comorbidities? Then you don't have anything to worry about. 
Uh, and let's remember this. He Here he is coming around to the Jimmy Dore Show point of view on uh, mandates. Watch this. The idea of checking if people are vaccinated, you know, if you have breakthrough infections, what's the point? What's the point of checking for people's vaccination if you have breakthrough infections? Meaning if the vaccine doesn't stop you from getting it or contracting it or, or spreading it, what's the point of a mandate? And he was right uh, then. He was wrong when I was arguing with the people, but he's finally come around to the Jimmy Dore show point of view. Uh, Look at that language. Remember, I, I just was reminded this term breakthrough. Breakthrough. Was, it was used to, to, to create the sense that the vaccine was still rare. did prevent infection and that it was rare. It's just and infection, it was, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a breakthrough infection. It's just, as Max said on the show a long time ago, all their lives known as an infection. Yeah. An infection. It's the same thing that Purdue Pharma, the Sackler family, did uh, with their opioids. Oh, breakthrough which, pain. <laughs> breakthrough pain. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because they lied to the general public and said that you this would this pill would protect you 24 hours and that's how they started getting them addicted. And it does not. And then, uh, wow. And then they said, "Oh, well, it's just breakthrough pain and to cure breakthrough pain, we are going to go back to the FDA, which was then headed by uh, Janet Woodcock, who is Biden's acting FBI, FDA commissioner throughout the entire uh, 2021. And they said, we need you to up the dosage that we can give to the public for mild or moderate pain because of breakthrough pain. <laughs> and she said, OK. And then they let loose a genocide on the American population where everyone got hooked on this. And when they couldn't get it anymore, they switched to heroin. Well, that's what you have to do eventually. I was on. Now, I can't blame them because the time I got on it, I was well aware it was basically heroin. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you have to stop. Like, I, my, I joke about my a dealer and a doctor like heroin is better for your liver and cheaper than what you're doing with Oxycontin. Really? I'm like, that's how bad the Oxycontin was that I was taking. Really? It was horrendously Damn. expensive. Now, again, I wasn't told by a doctor, yeah, you should start just taking Oxycontin. But... I had, you know, pain pills for something else legitimate and then they were around so I would get by them and then I would get I guess breakthrough <laughs> breakthrough pain. I would get breakthrough not being high. So I'd have to up the dosage. <laughs> hey, we're coming to Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Detroit, Los Angeles, Spokane, Tacoma, Denver. Go to jimmydorcomedy.com for a link for all our tickets for all our live shows. See you there. Mm -hmm.